Hi everyone, this is Theo from ParkerBlocks.com. Today I'm going to review the Microsoft Surface Pro 2017. I bought this a few weeks ago as a second-hand unit just to save some money. The official retail price is a bit too high for me. And also this year they did not include the Surface Pen with the tablet so you have to spend an extra hundred dollars so I decided to wait for a few months for a good deal and I managed to get this second-hand unit at about 15% discount off the official retail price. So today I'm going to talk about the design, the physical aspect of this tablet and also show you how the Surface Pen works with different drawing apps. So let's get started. This review may be a bit long so if you want to save some time you can actually just check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. I will put the link in the video description below. All right. The Surface Pro that I bought comes with an Intel i5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Let's take a look at the different configurations available. All of these are in US dollar. Now the lowest configuration comes with an Intel Core M3 and this model only has 4 gigs of RAM. The next model also has 4 gigs of RAM. If you are getting the Surface Pro for digital painting or graphic design purposes, get at least 8 gigs of RAM and if you can afford it, maybe 16 gigs. But um, when it comes to the best value Surface Pro for general purposes, I would say that the one in the middle is the best. It's this one. The one that comes with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. In terms of the physical design of the new Surface Pro, the design is actually very similar to the Surface Pro 4 that came before this. This is still a 12.2 inch screen and we have the rounded corners here. There are actually still some ventilated holes here but this unit, this Intel i5 unit does not come with any fans inside so during operations this is perfectly silent which is really good because the earlier Surface Pro 4 the fan kicks in randomly and it's really noisy and irritating so this is a huge plus for me. This is the mini display port. I use this very often to connect this to my external monitor and this is your typical USB 3 port. And down here we have the power port and behind the stand we have this little slot here this is for the micro SD card slot so if you want to you can expand the storage further and it costs around less than US $100 for an extra 200 gigs of storage so it's really quite worth the money on the front we have two speakers one on the left and one on the right the quality is very good now the overall build quality of this tablet it feels really solid there is no flex at all and the back has a very smooth metallic surface this is really nice to touch uh, camera here which I never use and this is the stand so with the stand you can actually position the Surface Pro at different angles now the new stand can go down to, a, to an even lower angle like this and personally I prefer the stand from the previous model from the Surface Pro 4 which is higher like this because if you want to position this stand like this at this angle with this new model when you're drawing the stand is going to get pushed down all the way so um, at this angle it's no different from using the Surface Pro flat on the table a lot of tech websites criticize Microsoft for not including the USB Type-C port personally for me I'm still using a lot of devices that uses this USB type A port for example my scanner USB thumb drive external drive and a lot of the charging cables uses this port so to me it is not a downside but hopefully Microsoft can introduce the USB type C port in the future in addition to this port all the Surface Pro models use SSD storage so you can expect really snappy performance when it comes to starting the OS, rebooting, launching applications. For example, I'm going to launch Medibank Paint Pro right now and before I can finish my sentence, this is already up. And maybe let's launch another app, maybe let's launch an older app 
let's try Adobe Lightroom. So this is Adobe Lightroom and it launches very quickly as well. The resolution of this screen is 2736 by 1824. This is a very high resolution on this 12.2 inch screen. It makes everything looks sharp, the fonts are sharp, and many of the Windows user interface, they are sharp. However, if you are running some older software, they may not scale properly on such high resolution. Now for me, I'm still using Adobe CS6 and CS6, the user interface, it doesn't scale very nicely on this high resolution screen. It makes the user interface look really tiny. This is Adobe Illustrator CS6 and the menus here, these are really tiny. It's impossible for me to click on any of the menus with my finger. I have to use the pen. And the icons here, they are also really tiny. I think it's very difficult for me to see the icons clearly and comfortably. If you are still using older software like Adobe CS6 and older or other types of old software, I do recommend that you go to the software's website or online forums to do some research to see whether or not the user interface of those software will skill properly on high resolution screens like this. If they do not, then it's going to be a very frustrating experience to use such small menus and such small buttons. There's actually a hack to increase the size of all these menus and buttons but it's going to make everything look a bit pixelated so even for vector software like adobe illustrator all the fonts they are going to be pixelated so that hack is actually a compromise as well what you are looking at is actually a page layout design this is an illustrator eps file with images embedded onto it it's a large file but i can still work quite uh, smoothly on it so the processing power and the RAM is definitely suitable enough for basic graphic design work like this however the screen the 12.2 inch screen is a bit too small for me so when working on files like this when working on large files large pages I prefer to connect the Surface Pro to an external monitor using the mini display port here if you are using an external monitor that only has HDMI input or DVI input, then you will need to get uh, one of these adapters that convert the mini display port to other types of port. So for example, if I want to connect this to my TV, I need to use that because my TV only has HDMI input. But usually I just connect this directly to my monitor which uses the display port. And when I connect to my monitor, I can choose to black out this screen and use this as a normal tablet. So even with the screen blacked out, I can still draw on it like it's a normal graphics tablet. I always choose to black out the screen when I connect this to an external monitor because the old software that I was talking about like Adobe CS6, the user interface, they actually scale properly on my external monitor, but not here. Let's look at the new Surface Pen which is no longer included with the Surface Pro and sells for 100 US dollars. So this is quite expensive. The build quality is very solid. This is a bit different compared to the previous model. The clip is gone. There is still a side button here and one button at the back which can also work as an eraser in certain software. This looks like a felt tip to me. This is not those hard plastic tips so it has that additional texture it feels good when drawing or writing on the glass screen it provides that additional control so that it is not so slippery on the screen i've only been using this surface pen for a few weeks so i'm not sure how durable this tip is going to be or whether or not the replacement tips from surface pro 4 whether they can be used here if I have that information, I will update that in my text review. Notice that this side of the pen, it's flat. There's actually a magnet inside the pen, which allows the pen to snap to the side of the Surface Pro. And the magnet is very strong, so there's no way that you can shake the Surface Pro to dislodge the pen accidentally. 
Now the main highlight of the surface pen is it's now able to support up to 4000 levels of pressure sensitivity and there is also tilt support depending on the app that you use of course. Over the past few weeks that I have used this Surface Pen, it performs really well. Now the thing that I do not like about this pen is it has very limited customization for the side button and also the button at the back. You can customize the pressure sensitivity of the pen using this app called Surface. I like to have this on the light side. And it will give you this curve here. And if you move over to the right side, you can change the pressure curve to something like this. Personally, I prefer a light touch, so I'm going to pick this. And to customize the buttons, you actually have to go to this page here, and there is actually not a lot you can customize. So for this button at the back, if you want it to do something different, you can only choose between these five commands that have already been predetermined. So if you want to assign a specific keyboard shortcut, there is no way to do so. And this applies to the button on the side as well. And there is something quirky about this side button. For example, when I'm in hover mode, when I see that cursor there, I want to click on this button to get that contextual menu. I do not get that when I press that button. I actually have to press the button first before I tap onto the screen to get this menu and this is quite irritating and this is more irritating because there is no way to change that setting to have it function like a normal right click here and now I'm going to show you how the pen performs with different apps that I have installed on Windows this is Photoshop CS6 the first thing I want to say is this app does not support finger gestures does not support panning and in fact, something weird just happened. Let me bring this back. Finger gestures only work with selected apps, most notably the tablet apps. This Photoshop, this is a desktop app, so finger gestures is not supported here. And with the newer versions of Adobe CC, which I do not have, I believe that they do support finger gestures. Now, to get pressure working with Photoshop, you have to install the WinTap driver first. If you do not install WinTap, you're not going to get pressure with Photoshop. Pressure sensitivity works quite well. Now the animation of the lines appearing, it appears to be a bit choppy. I think it's a software issue because with other apps that I have used, the animation, the lines, they appear quite smooth. And this is very accurate in the sense that the lines always appear beneath the tip of the pen. Let me draw some curves to let you see whether or not the lines are smooth enough. Let's zoom in. I think the lines, they are quite smooth. Now usually for lines that are drawn at more than 100%, they are usually very smooth. Now when it comes to drawing at 100%, Let's see whether or not the lines can be as smooth. All right, let's zoom in again. I can definitely see some jitter there. This was drawn at 100% and now I'm zooming in at 400%. So again, I'm going to show you the lines. So this is quite smooth and this has some jitter, some wobbliness but overall, it's not really a big deal. Now with Photoshop, you can actually install a plugin to help smoothen the lines. Uh, the plugin that I know is called Lazy Nezumi Pro. There are some tilt brushes with Photoshop, so I've chosen a tilt brush, and when I move my pen around, it doesn't seem to be moving, so at least at the time of this review, tilt is not supported yet. Maybe Microsoft is going to add that update in the future. This is Adobe Illustrator CS6 and pressure works fine. This is Medibank Paint Pro. Pressure works here quite well. By the way, Medibank actually supports finger gestures so you can pinch to zoom, you can pan and you can also rotate. Although the animation is a bit choppy. 
One of the deal breakers for Surface Pro 4 and uh, previous Surface Pen is the jitter you get when you are drawing diagonal lines. And I'm happy to say that this new pen, you can draw diagonal lines very slowly like this. And the jitter is not very significant. I mean, there is still some slight jitter there. But it's not as bad compared to Surface Pro 4. I mean, this is almost straight. This is a very significant improvement to the jitter situation. So now I can draw really slowly like this, and it's really easy to achieve straight lines. This is a Sketchable. This is actually a tablet app. Pressure works really well here. This is a fantastic app for sketching. It also supports finger gestures. You can pinch to zoom, you can pan, and you can rotate as well. The animation effects are also very smooth. So just now I was showing you how mini bang when I'm rotating, it feels a bit choppy, but here it's really smooth. Not just that, when drawing, it looks like the lines are appearing almost instantly beneath the tip. So this is definitely much better, more responsive compared to Photoshop and also Medibank Paint Pro. The battery life for the new Surface Pro 2017 has also improved quite significantly. In Surface Pro 4, it was around 4 hours to 5 hours and that is really quite short for the price you are paying. But with this new Surface Pro now, I can get around 6 hours, 7 hours, 8 hours. 7 hours is the average, so it's quite a significant improvement from 4 hours. As mentioned earlier, this Surface Pro that I'm using, it doesn't come with any fans, so it uses passive cooling. And I've been using this tablet for almost an hour or two, and it feels quite warm. So the temperature is somewhat similar to my LCD monitor after I have switched it on for an hour. So this surface, um, it feels as warm as my LCD monitor's screen. This is art rich. Pressure works here as well. By the way, this is an active pen, so you can actually just rest your palm on the glass surface and draw. There is almost perfect palm rejection so you don't have to worry about stray strokes appearing most of the desktop apps they do not support finger gestures but tablet apps they do but the only finger gestures that is supported here is actually the pinch and zoom and also the pen there is no rotate this is Wacom bamboo paper this is actually my favorite app for taking notes because it can capture my handwriting quite well and the tip, it feels really good when writing on the surface. There is no obvious hard tapping sound that you get when you are tapping the screen with a hard plastic tip. So this tip, this is not hard, this is firm and it writes really well. And this app is also quite responsive. This is Mischief. I have a problem with Mischief. When it comes to drawing circles or curves like this, it always starts with this straight line. And that is actually a problem with the wind tap driver. When I disable wind tap, I can draw circles perfectly or curves like this very very nicely. The wind tap driver somehow affects um, this app. So those are all the drawing apps that I have on Windows. There are definitely a lot more out there like Krita, Clip Studio, Manga Studio, GIMP. I cannot test them all. But for those that I've tested, they work quite well with the Surface Pen. Pressure sensitivity is well supported. Palm rejection works almost flawlessly. And overall, it's quite a satisfactory experience to be drawing with the new Surface Pen. There are some quirks that are related specific to uh, certain apps. For example, with Mischief, I have that strange problem with the circular lines. I think with the exception of Mischief, all the other apps, they work really quite nicely. 
Many tech websites say that the improvements to this new model is only incremental at best and they are actually correct. However, with the previous model, the Surface Pro 4, the performance is already quite snappy. With this new model, it is as snappy as before, maybe even slightly faster, but the difference is not significant. Over the past few weeks that I have used this, I really do not see any lag. Everything has been really responsive with the exception of working on really large Photoshop files with a lot of layers and adjustment layers. So that's when it starts to slow down a bit. All the things that I hate about the Surface Pro 4, the fans, the battery life and the pen jitter, all those issues have been resolved in this new model. So now this is a much more compelling device for digital artists who need a portable sketch pad that you can bring around, that you can draw anywhere. So this I think is quite a good product this time around. Now I want to talk about the pricing. Now this is a bit more expensive compared to the previous model because the pen is no longer included and if you want to get the type cover that is also quite expensive. Personally for me I prefer to use this keyboard. This is a Logitech keyboard which is cheaper and it performs as well as the type cover but of course you do not get the protection that is uh, provided by the type cover. So you might want to get a matte screen protector, but I do not think that a screen protector is necessary because the pen tip has some nice texture on it. And when drawing on the screen, it feels quite nice. It's not very slippery. It offers a good amount of control. So I do not think a screen protector is uh, required to get that paper-like texture. But if you want to get a screen protector to protect uh, from scratches, I guess you can do so. But note that uh, it may affect the image quality of the screen. So I guess that that's all for my review today. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section just below. And if I have any updates to my review, I will update them on my text review. The link is also in the video description. Thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful in some way. See you in the next one. Bye.